So when we talk about regurgitation, um, let's, let's look at mitral regurgitation, okay? So when you have mitral regurgitation, what we're telling you is that in systole, blood is flowing from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium. Remember the normal flow, the normal forward flow of blood is from the left atrium across the mitral valve into the left ventricle. But if the mitral valve is incompetent, for whatever reason, if the valve is incompetent, for whatever reason, and you have mitral regurgitation, then in systole, when the left ventricle contracts, we expect blood to flow across the left ventricle flow tract, across the aortic valve, and into the aorta. But if the mitral valve is incompetent, blood is also going to flow backwards from the left ventricle, across the mitral valve, and into the left atrium. That's what we call mitral regurgitation. Now, regurgitation anywhere is basically the same principle. When we talk about tricuspid regurgitation, it's the same. Tricuspid regurgitation in systole, when the right ventricle contracts, blood is going to flow backwards across the tricuspid valve into the right atrium because the tricuspid valve is incompetent. The normal flow is for, for, for blood to flow from the left atrium across the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. That's a normal flow. Now, regurgitation, whether it's mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation, is, is, is very common. And we have to assess how significant the regurgitation is. Is it mild? Is it moderate or is it severe? When we do valvular heart disease, we're going to, you know, these assessments in a little bit more detail. But one, one of the, 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 the methods that we can use to assess the severity of the regurgitation is regurgitant volume. Because if you think about it, so you just need to think about these things. If, um, if, if you have significant regurgitation, you're going to get a large volume of blood going from the left ventricle, across the mitral valve, and into the left atrium. If you have significant regurgitation. If you have just a little bit of regurgitation, then you're going to have a small volume of blood going from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium. So, so the volume of blood that's regurgitating will tell you how significant or how severe the regurgitation is. Does that make sense? And uh, extrapolating from that, then the regurgitant fraction. Because if the fraction of blood that's going backward is, is larger and larger, then you're going to get more and more severe regurgitation. So we can use hemodynamics to calculate regurgitant volume and ends regurgitant fraction. So again, you just have to conceptualize, you have to think about these things. All right, let's look at mitral regurgitation. So we, we're gonna we're gonna look at mitral regurgitation, but regurgitation anywhere is the same principle. So when we have mitral regurgitation, we have a certain amount of blood which is going backwards from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium. And that volume of blood is called the regurgitant volume. 
Now the regurgitant volume is going to mix with the normal amount of blood that's norm that would flow across. It's going to mix with the, the, the normal amount of blood that would flow from the left atrium across the mitral valve into the left ventricle. So, so the additional amount is going to be due to the regurgitant volume. Okay? So, again, you have to try and conceptualize it. The regurgitant volume is the volume of blood that's going backwards. It's going to mix with it because normally you have, normally, normally you would have blood flowing from the left atrium cross the mitral valve into the left ventricle that you'd have no the normally you'd have that that amount of blood flow but that normal amount of blood flow is going to be mixed with the re, with the regurgitant volume it's going to mix with the regurgitant volume and hence you're going to get an increased amount of blood flowing across the mitral valve in diastole okay so, so you have to sort of conceptualize that. So when you have regurgitation of blood going from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium, you're going to get additional amount of blood in the left atrium. And that is why left atrium gets larger and larger. The, the, more, the more significant the mitral regurgitation, the left atrium is going to get larger and larger because more blood is going backwards. So it stands that going forward, you're going to have more blood going forward. And that an additional amount of blood is because you have the regurgitant volume. All right. So I hope you get that concept. Now, if you look at the other valve, so, so look at the, 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 the look at your aortic valve, look at your tricuspid valve, your pulmonic valve. If you do not have significant regurgitation across those valves, then you can assume that the flow across those valves are the normal flow. And we usually use the flow across the left ventricle flow tract as a normal flow. As long as you don't have significant uh, aortic insufficiency, aortic regurgitation. Because if you have significant aortic regurgitation, the same thing is going to occur across the aortic valve. So if, if, we're, if we're assessing mitral regurgitation and we want to calculate the regurgitant volume, right, for the mitral regurgitation, then what we do, we calculate the flow across the mitral valve and then we're going to assume that the flow across the left ventricle flow tract is a normal flow, the normal amount of blood that would, no, that would flow across the mitral valve if you did not have mitral regurgitation. So the regurgitant volume is equal to the flow across the mitral valve, which is increased. And you're going to subtract from that the flow across the left ventricle flow tract, which is, you know, which would be the normal flow. The difference is going to be the regurgitant volume. We can calculate or we can assess the flow across the mitral valve using the, you know, the, the, the hydraulic orifice formula. We talk, we, we constantly going back to that. Flow is equal to cross-sectional area times time velocity integral or velocity. Okay? So if we look at the mitral valve, we can calculate the cross-sectional area of the mitral valve, and we can get the time velocity integral across the mitral valve. That's going to give you the flow across the mitral valve. Remember, because you have mitral regurgitation, that flow, that flow across the mitral valve is going to be the normal flow plus the regurgitant volume. If you can subtract from that the normal flow, 
and we're going to assume that the flow across the left ventricular flow tract is a normal flow, as long as there is no significant aortic regurgitation. Okay? So the difference between the flow across the mitral valve and the flow across the left ventricular flow tract is the regurgitant volume. And if you want to get a regurgitant fraction, then it's the regurgitant volume over the flow across the mitral valve. You have to get the concept. It's not something you, you memorize. Never memorize this. So the general concept is that if you're looking for regurgitant volume, the forward flow, the forward flow across a regurgitant valve is the sum of the stroke volume, which is a normal flow, and the regurgitant volume. Again, when we talk about mitral regurgitation, uh, blood is going to go back into the left atrium. It's going to mix with the normal amount of blood that would flow forward. The additional amount of blood is going to be the regurgitant volume. We can calculate the, 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 the flow that would be normal by using the flow across the left ventricular flow track. Okay? Remember, so the difference between the two flows is the regurgitant volume. The regurgitant fraction is the regurgitant volume over the normal forward flow across the mitral valve. So the concept is a very important one. And just to remind you, flow is equal to cross-sectional area times time velocity integral. Okay, so we can calculate the regurgitant volume. We can calculate regurgitant fraction. All right, I'm going to introduce another concept to you guys. And uh, again, when we when we do valvular heart disease, we're going to go over these things. But it's best for you to have an understanding now, so that when we do valvular heart disease, you sail through it. So spend the time understanding these concepts now. So when we do our valvular heart disease, you, you don't have much problem. So the concept we're going to introduce is um, the PISA. Okay? So what does this stand for? Okay. So, so PISA is a method we use to assess regurgitation uh, across the different valves. And we can also use it to assess stenosis across the valves. It is extremely accurate, and that is why you need to know it, OK? It is very accurate. And when you look at reports, they will use the PISA method to assess the severity of regurgitation, OK? So the concept with pizza is that, all right, let, let's, so we're going to look at mitral regurgitation specifically, but the concept is a general one. So when we talk about mitral regurgitation again, we're talking about blood in systole flowing from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium in systole because the mitral valve is incompetent for whatever reason. Okay, it's mitral regurgitation. When you have mitral regurgitation, blood regurgitating backwards into the left atrium, that phenomenon is going to set up a series of concentric rings on the opposite side of the mitral valve. So if if we if this is our mitral valve right here, okay, so this is our mitral valve right here, and this is our regurgitation. Blood is flowing from the left ventricle up here, and so the, this is the, the, the left atrium down here. So this is our blood regurgitating back into the left atrium. You're gonna get a series of concentric rings on the opposite side on the ventricular side, okay? These are hemispheric shells, okay? 
So this regurgitation and these, this is a hemodynamic phenomenon. This is a hydraulic phenomenon. This is something that occurs, okay? So whenever you have regurgitation, okay, opposite to that, you're gonna get your hemispheric shells, okay? The velocity on the surface of the hemisphere is the same. All along the surface of the hemisphere, the velocity is the same, okay? It's, it's, it's an hemisphere because it's half of a sphere. It's half of a sphere, and we call that a hemisphere, okay? So this is a hemisphere, half of a sphere. It has a radius, which is half the diameter, okay? So it, the, the radius would be from here to the, 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 the outermost portion of the hemisphere. Okay, and all along the, the surface here, the velocity is the same. And that is why it's called proximal. Okay, so this is our proximal uh, 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 flow. Iso velocity, iso means same. So it's the same, same velocity, surface area. So all along this surface, the velocity is the same. Using hydraulic principles or the, 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 the conservation of mass principles, the regurgitant flow, the regurgitant flow is equal to this flow at pizza. So this is our pizza all right up here. The, 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 the pizza is just a series of hemispheric shells that is set up because of the regurgitation. All along the surface, the velocity is the same. The regurgitate, the regurgitant, the regurgitant uh, flow is the same as the flow at Pisa. Again, using our principle, flow is equal to cross-sectional area times velocity right so if we're looking at the flow at pizza we said this is an hemispheric shell hemispheric shell so the flow at pizza cross-sectional area the area of the area of an hemisphere is 2 pi r squared because the area of a sphere is twice that, which is 4 pi r squared. So the area of a hemisphere is 2 pi r squared. And remember what we said, the velocity along the surface is the same. So the velocity is VA. Again, the flow at pizza, flow anywhere is equal to cross-sectional area time velocity the area of an hemisphere is 2 pi r squared the velocity along the surface is va that's just what we call the Anderson velocity it's so good that when you're in echo you can you can adjust and you can set this Anderson velocity so when you're actually doing these studies you if you look at your color on, on the side of your monitor, on the side of your ultrasound monitor, there's a color, a bar, and you can adjust this aliasing velocity. That's the velocity on the, uh, along the surface. And you can adjust it to get a nice hemisphere. You adjust your aliasing velocity and you get a nice hemisphere. Okay? Now, what is the regurgitant flow? The same principle. Flow anywhere is equal to cross-sectional area times velocity. So the regurgitant flow is equal to the, the, the regurgitant um, the, the, the area. The area that we're talking about, though, so when you get regurgitation, so conceptualize this again. Look at it. When you have, say, mitral regurgitation, Blood is gonna rush from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium. 
So it is actually flowing along a path. It's flowing along a path from the left ventricle to the left atrium. It's, it's going to create an a, 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 a area through which it's going to flow. And that area through which it's flowing is called the EROA, the Effective Regurgitant Orifice Area. So it, 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 it's, a, it's an area, but that area can vary, and it's going to vary depending on the severity of the regurgitation. So the blood is flowing backwards into the left atrium. It's flowing along a certain path. Okay? It, that path is going to have a certain area. Okay? That path is going to have a certain area. And we call that the EROA, Effective Regurgitant Orifice Area. So if we, and it, it, the area is right here. Okay, let me, the area is right here. Okay, so let me, the area is going to be someplace right here. Okay? It's going to be a little tiny, you know, let me see if I can. It's going to be a little tiny, you know, it's probably like that. It's going to be probably circular, ovoid, whatever. And the, 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 so the regurgitation is going to come down here. The regurgitation is coming down here. And it's going to come through this little area. This is the area, cross-sectional area we're talking about. To get the regurgitant flow, this cross-sectional area times the velocity is going to give us the regurgitant flow. Okay? So this potential area is called the EROA, Effective Regurgitant Orifice Area, and then the velocity of the mitral regurgitation, we can get that. So multiplying the EROA times the regurgitant velocity, we're going to get the regurgitant flow. And remember what we said, the flow at pizza is equal to the regurgitant flow. Okay, so, so, so that's a very important concept. The regurgitant flow is equal to the flow at pizza. So, all right, so the flow rate at the surface of an hemispheric shell is the same as the flow rate across the, the, the regurgitant orifice. So basically what I'm saying, the flow rate across the flow rate at pizza, the hemisphere that I just showed you, is the same as the flow rate across the regurgitant orifice. The flow is the same. Again, flow is equal to cross-sectional area times the velocity. Okay? This is supposed to be an hemisphere. The, 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 the cross-sectional area of an hemisphere is 2 pi r squared. Okay? So if we're going to look at the, the flow rate at the surface of the hemispheric shell, it is equal to the area times the velocity, and the velocity is what we call the aliasing velocity. We actually, in the echo lab, we adjust that velocity to get an to get the nice hemisphere. You want to get that nice hemisphere, so you have to adjust it. So in the echo lab, you, you're going to adjust. You're going to know what your aliasing velocity is. And by adjusting this aliasing velocity in the lab, you get a nice hemisphere, and you can measure the radius. You can measure the radius directly. So. you can calculate the flow rate at the surface of uh, the hemispheric shell. You can calculate the flow at pizza because you know the radius, you're going to measure it, and the aliasing velocity, you adjust your settings to get the aliasing velocity. Okay? So you can calculate that, uh, that, that flow rate at pizza. Remember what we said, the regurgitant flow, the regurgitant flow, the blood is flowing, well, it gets used mitral regurgitation, the blood is flowing from the left ventricle across a potential area 
into the left atrium, okay? So that area is what we call the EROA. And if we multiply the area times the velocity, the regurgitant velocity that is, we get the regurgitant uh, flow, okay? If you remember, when, we, when you have mitral regurgitation and you do your CW across the mitral valve, you're going to get the, 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 the MR velocity. You get the peak MR velocity. That's the velocity we're talking about. The only thing you cannot directly measure is the EROA. And this is extremely important because the severity of your mitral regurgitation or any regurgitation is going to vary with the EROA, the effective regurgitant orifice area. That is, if you have mild regurgitation, the EROA, the area is going to be small. If you have a large amount of regurgitation, the EROA is going to be a large number. It's going to be big. Okay? So if we can calculate the EROA, we can determine the severity of the regurgitation. All right? We know that the regurgitant flow is the EROA times the regurgitant velocity, and that is equal to the flow at pizza. So we combine them, okay? Then we can calculate the EROA by rearranging the equation. So the EROA is equal to the flow at pizza, which is the area of the hemispheric shell times the Edison velocity, and we're going to divide by the regurgitant velocity. That's going to give you the EROA. It's important to calculate the EROA because the larger the EROA, the more severe the, the regurgitation, whether it's mitral tricuspid or whatever. So this is how you do it, okay? And I went over the concept behind it. Now you, I showed you one method to calculate the regurgitant volume. You can also use the PISA method to calculate the regurgitant volume because you know that the EROA, the area, so, well, we know that the, 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 the flow or volume is area times TVI, okay? Okay? You know that regurgitant, well, volume, you know, when we talk about flow, if you think about it, flow is a volume moving with respect to time. So when we talk about flow, we're actually talking about a volume with respect to time. So if we want to calculate regurgitant volume, we get the EROA we got from before. If we multiply it by the TVI, we get the regurgitant volume. And that this TVI is, when we look at the, the, the say the mitral regurgitation, we can get the peak mitral velocity. And if we trace the MR envelope, we get the, T, the TVI, time velocity integral. And if we multiply them, we'll get the regurgitant volume. So this is how it looks. Okay, so again, this is our apical tree chamber view there. Okay, purse is right there. Or this is our left ventricle mitral valve, and this is our left atrium with mitral regurgitation. Blood is from, from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium. It's moving away from the transducer, hence the flow is below the baseline. You're going to get a certain velocity, which is 5.54 meters per second. And when you trace the borders, you get your time velocity integral. Okay? So the regurgitant flow is equal to the flow at pizza. The flow at pizza is 2 pi r squared, area of the hemisphere, times your alias in velocity. You're going to set that. So, okay, so again, this is your monitor. This number here is your alias in velocity. But when you're doing your, your assessment, you're going to adjust the, the alias in velocity until you get a nice hemispheric shell. So again, the flow at pizza is 2 pi r squared the area of our hemisphere, times the alias in velocity, 
which is VA, and that is going to equal to your regurgitant flow. Your regurgitant flow is equal to your EROA, effective regurgitant orifice area, times the, 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 the regurgitant velocity, the MR velocity. Once you get your EROA, and you, if you want to calculate, or you should calculate regurgitant volume, regurgitant volume is equal to the EROA times the time velocity integral. You're going to multiply by the time velocity integral, and you'll get your, um, you'll get your regurgitant volume. Okay, so, so that's all we have for you for hemodynamics. You have to go over this because everything else in echo depends on uh, yeah, hemodynamics. You need hemodynamic assessment to evaluate everything. So I advise you to go over it numerous times, multiple times.